This video will introduce you to the basics of making class diagrams in UML. If you're totally new to UML, we've got a UML basics video linked under the info button in the upper right. You can start there for a higher level overview. Otherwise, let's get started with this class diagram tutorial. This tool is called Gliffy, which is a diagramming app available in Confluence, Jira, and online. You can draw a class diagram and follow along with this tutorial on paper or get started with a free trial of Gliffy Online to do exactly what we're doing. Our free trial is linked from the info in the upper right panel as well. Simply put, class diagrams use classes and interfaces to depict a system structure. In object-oriented programming, a class is like a blueprint or a cookie cutter that's used to create objects. So the class of a book would be your template to describe many books. To create this diagram from scratch, we are going to go to File, New, and open a new diagram by selecting UML and ERD from the Create a New Diagram panel. This preloads UML shapes, including the standard notations for class diagrams in the panel on the left here. So I can click to open all of those. So let's start our tutorial with the highest level category or class, which is books. I can drag out this class shape and double click to label it correctly books. There are two sections beneath class, which are the attributes and methods or functions. An attribute is a way that this class is described or a piece of information that we store about each object in this class. In the case of books, this would be things like titles, authors, publishers, lookup numbers, maybe publish dates, and so on. We can double click to add these and edit the text in this space. It's also important to add what type of value you expect to see here, whether it's binary, a number, a date, or a string of letters. So I'm going to go ahead and update each of these. Now below that we have this box called methods. This is where we describe the methods or functions that can be done to interact with the attributes of one of these objects. So for our library lookup system, that would be things like making sure the title and the author appear in search queries and checking on the availability of a book. So we'll double click and edit this to add those in. We're gonna say get title, and then you always put parentheses at the end get author and get availability. I'm going to click this little A to format these correctly and make sure that they're all aligned. Great. Now in front of each of the lines of text we added for this book class, we need to add a little annotation that tells you how visible or available that information is within the system. Most often you'll see plus or minus signs in front of these. The plus sign means that it's accessible throughout the system. So we would want the title of every book in the system to be accessible. I'm gonna put a plus sign there. A minus sign on the other hand would indicate that that information is hidden or private. I'm going to go ahead and update each of these to make sure that we clearly dictate that they'll be visible in the system. Great. So as I think about how a library is organized, I might want to create subclasses. These would allow me to capture additional information about some books, but not all books. A good example for this would be that I want to capture the reading grade levels for books in the children's section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out another one of these class shapes, and I'm going to create a subclass labeled children's section. I'll connect this with this hollow headed arrow, and this is called a generalization or inheritance arrow. And you just drag and drop it, and then you edit each endpoint. So this shows that the children's section inherits all of the attributes outlined in the books class, or that the books class is in the reverse, a generalization of all the books in the children's section. So here in the attributes section, I'm going to add reading level. And that will be an integer. 
And maybe I decide that I don't want reading level to show up in the system for just anyone. I want it to be just for librarians. So I'm going to put a minus sign there. That tells us that we'll be collecting this information, but that it won't be visible. Now, how else could we organize a library? I'm going to draw out two more class shapes to create subclasses for fiction and command D to quickly copy it, fiction and nonfiction. Just like the children's section, I'm also going to connect these to the superclass using that generalization arrow. So this is what tells me that these subclasses inherit everything from the books class plus have their own attributions. So dragging and dropping that arrow, that green circle that appears around the arrow tells you that it's locked to the shape. And then I can easily reorganize these two. So I could move this up here. I can drop this down. And it gives you the flexibility to restructure your diagram a little bit as you need to. Great, okay. Now, as I look at it for fiction books, I think I'd like to set a genre as well. So I'm going to add genre. And we'll use that plus icon again to make it visible throughout the system. But I want to control that input and make sure that my system doesn't end up with 40 different genres. So to do that, I'm going to add what's called an enumeration. That's this shape here that has an E. And so I'll drag this out. And in this, I'm just going to submit all the genres that I think would be appropriate to include in this system. So I'll do adventure, romance, fantasy, sci-fi, horror, and mystery. And what this does is clarifies that we will be setting a genre for a fiction book, but that it will be one of these objects. I'm gonna connect this with an association line. Put that there. And rename this genre so that we're crystal clear. Now that I look at it, I think it'd be good to use these genres in the children's section too. So I'm going to double click to edit the attributes for the children's section and also add that genre item. And I'll draw in an association line here as well. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to try and connect the lines near the item in the attributes list just to kind of clarify where I want people's eyes to go in this diagram. For my fiction books, I might also want to quickly collect and flag whether a book is, say, a New York Times bestseller. I can add that attribute in just a few clicks as well. Is bestseller. And that'll be binary. Likewise, I'm going to add a method or a function that's specific to this subclass in the lowest box, that method function box, so that we can easily edit the bestseller status, because that's something that could change. Great. Make that a little smaller. And now that I think about that, I should probably add the same function to edit the reading grade level in the children's section, just in case something is graded a little too harsh or the librarian doesn't think its grade level is appropriate. That way they can update that. All right, and looking at our nonfiction books, I want to add a category for our nonfiction books called type, which would be kind of like a genre. And likewise, I'm going to drag out an enumeration box and list out the types that it could be. So those would be biographies, history books, say journals or journalism, manuals and self-help. So this tells us that when we set the type, it will be one of these objects. Then I will connect this with an association arrow as well. Great. 
That covers all the basics when it comes to drawing a UML class diagram in Gliffy. Keep in mind this is a really simplified example of the library's organization system, and we could take it a step back and show the program that lets people look up or check out the library books online. It'd be more complicated with classes like accounts or subclasses for library visitors and then the librarians so that they can have different permission levels to access the system. We might have private attributes like passwords and so on. When you are ready to make a more complex diagram, Gliffy has all the standardized notations in this class diagram folder so that you can make your diagram in a breeze. 